mind and, and really truly care about what we're doing. And the reason is because we've raised the bar. And we've created something here very, very special. And when you create something very special, the expectations are what they are. And we're all about the elephant in the room. We're very transparent, and we understand what it's about. And when you're in my position as the head basketball coach at a university like this, not me, but in my position, it is very, very powerful. And your accountability to what you have to do for this university, the money that can be brought in, and the way in which you can raise the awareness and the worth of your degree is something that I take very personal. And I understand. And I love the fact that I have that opportunity to be in this seat. And I will continue to do what we've done because we've done it very special. In the last five years, you couldn't argue of a better team in the league. As a matter of fact, for the last five years, probably you don't know this, but a different team went to the NCAA tournament from our league. That's how much we've had differences and not really one team just dominate our league. And the great thing about these guys is, especially the guys that have been the longest, 30 and 8 at home, which is a great accomplishment. But they play 21 money games, 18 power fives. And that's very, very difficult to do. But they've weathered it, they persevered it, and like it says in Scripture, they've endured it, which has given them great strength, which allows them to have the character that they have. And I know this, when it comes down to it at the end of the year, when we forget about the perception of all the media stuff and who's picked to do what, and we get to the reality of March, their character will show through. And when talent is equal, character will dominate victory. And that's how it works in athletics. You can just go right down the pipe and see it when it's teams of similarities that are playing each other. These guys have done a lot. Like, when you look at their non-conference and you talk about it, and Coach Gibbs talks about the road and what it means to be on the road, when they were over for dinner the other night and I asked them what their greatest experience was, it was at Michigan State Friday night, at Michigan Final Four team on Saturday, and then at VCU, the best environment in mid-major college basketball. Like, that was their greatest non-conference deal that they went through. For me, it causes that, <laughs> right? From up above, the skunk line that comes into play. But because of that and because of what they get to do, Florida opening game, at Iowa, Creighton 17,000, Florida State top 25, Syracuse top 25, Dayton one of the greatest places. But the best part of it all is we've never had four home games in the non-conference during the week when our students are here until this year. And I'd love to tell you that Coach Cannon, who's done an unbelievable job with our scheduling, did that on purpose. But God was favorable for us. And because of that, we have a team picked to win their league, Georgia Southern, coming here. Conference USA, one of the top teams in the league, Southern Miss, coming here. And we return. High point with the great Tubby Smith. As my wife said last night, that Tubby Smith? Yes, that Tubby Smith, who held my boys on his lap in the early 2000s, his high point group is coming here. Not to mention we're going to Austin P, who has a player of the year in the OVC and one of the best teams in the league. So we have an incredible non-conference challenge, not only from the, mid or the Power 5 games and the money games we have to play, but also from a mid-major perspective. And a great challenge that will allow us to go into this league. I remember, like it was yesterday, the darling of our league, right, was them. And then all of a sudden came us. And now it's almost the same scenario. Because Liberty's become the darling of the league. Top 25 in some polls. And again, us and them, if you look at it closely... We're both picked one and two in every single coach's poll. Every single one. Some voting us, some voting them, but it was one and two. And you know what? It probably should be, and, it, and it's, that's probably what it's going to come down to. We both have about 78, 79% of our team coming back. No one has more accolades coming back than us. Nobody. But in this business, 
If you don't understand about going 1-0, and and you don't completely <clears throat> understand that every day is the most valuable, before yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, this is the day, and it's the most important day. If you don't assume that, then our first year, you don't beat the great Belmont team and upset them here in the arena, right? In front of about, what, 100 students on that day? Or the great Mercer team, if you remember, went on to beat Duke that year. Who beat them twice? The only team in the league to beat them twice, UNF. So I've been on the other side, and I understand what it's like to hunt, right? Though I never have, and I don't, though my boys do. I also understand what it's like to be the hunted, and they're coming after us. People used to put UNF on their schedule, two dubs. Now they put UNF on their schedule, can't wait to beat us. Can't wait to beat them. Because everybody loves them. Because everybody knows about them. So when people come, they come. Kennesaw State has as much scoring back on us as all of us. But a new coach. See what's going to happen. And a new coach at Stetson, who's got all these new players in an uncertainty. And a new coach at Lipscomb, one of my closest friends in the business, who's a great D coach, sort of like the Bellman, who's coming into the league. He's got some talent back. Two guys, first team all-conference. And then you've got Jacksonville and Gulf Coast. Two new teams that flipped their entire roster, have eight or nine new players, so who knows who they are? Well, let's not forget NJIT, maybe, well, I don't know about these guys would argue, and I would too, but a very, very dynamic backcourt that can really score the ball, and a kid that sat out that's really, really talented. And then North Alabama probably had, quote unquote, on paper, the best young people coming back, and a lot of people like them as well with the player of the year as a freshman. Freshman player of the year coming back as well, too. So when you look at all those teams, do you talk about all those teams? We'll be prepared, like Abe Lincoln said, or maybe Gardner Menchu said. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll be prepared, and our chance is going to come, and we'll go at it. The one thing that we have to understand is our culture is incredible. And what these guys have done individually, player of the year defensively, all freshman rookie of the year would be all time in blocks, all time in rebounds. Like, amazing. National team has taken him to another level. You guys won't recognize him. His body fat is down, right? But what you guys don't realize is he played the entire year hurt and refused to have surgery because he wanted to play. And now he's 100%. And last year, he was the best league guard in the league. And this year, he's first team unanimous all-conference. And he's the best mid-major league guard in America. Trust me. I know what one or two look like. This guy on the end wanted to leave us. Right? But because of our culture, and because of the guys that were with us, our culture helped him to understand why staying here was critical. And now he looks out here, three years later, and he's like, Wow. Like, there is something special about playing men's basketball at this university. And he's going to score about 1,700 points. He's going to be the second all-time scorer in the history of the school. Sorry, you're not going to pass that one. <laughs> what a great human being. And they're better human beings than they are players. But I leave this one for last. He gets no publicity. Nobody talks about him. He's the most underrated player in our league, not even close the most deadly guy on the scouting report, and he said it best at dinner at my house the other night. This guy right here, you'd never know it. He's married, getting his graduate degree, getting on a plane tonight and going to Lake Como. Not for his honeymoon, by the way. I'm not joking either, he's going to Italy tonight. This dude right here, we've done more with student wellness. We've done more with wellness, with our mind, we've done more with wellness with our heart than I've ever done in the history. I'm thankful for David McDonald, but I'm praising Fred for having the ability to come back. He's always been amazing to me and has done things to my mind that no one's ever done before in a subtle way. But this guy right here, he had no identity, didn't know who he was, was living in someone else's body and I didn't know it, because I thought everything was great. Because like NF said, he put a fake, face, 
face on and a big smile and you thought everything was great. But he figured it out. He got help. He knows who he is. And the greatest thing he's done is he's helped others realize if you just be you and stay in your lane, it's amazing what you can accomplish. And I'm super, super proud of this guy. And I pray one day that other people and young people that get touched by him will see the difference that he can make in someone's life.